I am thrilled at the opportunity to finally play a match that is not in my bathroom. Griffin Newman versus Josh Horowitz, round number two in New York, in Brooklyn. Both New York gentlemen, both undefeated in the undercard. I've got pants, I still have pants that I own, so I can, I can put them on, sure, why not? I wanna get back out there, I wanna get into the field, I wanna be playing people, I-R-L. And I'm glad that the Schmodown is coming to us to let us both play home field advantage in the city that we know. If you have an opportunity to get to that match in Brooklyn on October 9th during Comic-Con weekend, get there at SchmodownLive.com. It's the movie trivia schmodown. It is the Inner Geekdom Tournament. It is the semifinals. We are one match away to find out who is going to play the spider, Robert Parker, in the finals, and who's going to go to spectacular after that. Mark Ellis, you join me here today, and this match here between Saul and Moose Haas, man, this is going to be this is going to be a good one. You know, Christian, I'm currently in Las Vegas, and if you were to gamble on either Moose or Saul being here today, you, maybe you took a little bit of a bath, especially when you look at how Moose got here. A TKO over Chance Ellison. What an incredible performance that was. Saul playing well of late, and even though he had a stumble with a match against Amaru Moses, he has recovered nicely. And so both of these competitors prime position to get to those finals you were talking about. But in order to do that, one of them is going to have to beat each other, and neither one looks like they feel like blinking anytime soon. At all, because um, as you said, Saul debuted last year against Brandon Hanna and debuted very well, had a nice match, lost the match, but came back with a fire, knocking out both the real rejects. And then again, as you mentioned, Mark loses that match to Amaru Moses, but rebounds against Brandon Hanna and TKOs him. Moose Haas was a guy that through his audition, I said, this guy is going to be good. And the Finstock Exchange, they got him. He also lost to Amaru Moses. They both have lost to Moses. But that match, even though we had a silent match we were watching, tough match, tight match, Moose Haas is for real. And as you saw what he did against Chance Ellison, last year's IG tournament winner and went all the way to the spectacular, was out in the first round because of Moose Haas. Both coming off of knockout wins. This is a big match for the exchange who needs the three points. It's a big match for the Den, and it's a big match for both of these guys because whoever loses their season's over, whoever wins has a shot to get Parker and to get the Spectacular. So basically you're saying that Moose did better even in a loss to Amaru Moses than you and I did when we were after the fact announcing that match, trying yeah. to play along with them. That is just a little footnote in the history of both Moose and Saul. For more, and now look at how we got here today, check out this promo. You guys want me to talk about Moose House and Saul playing each other? I'm, I have no interest. We're going to cut from this. Just, I don't know what to tell you. Like, Saul's going to win that match. Understood. Okay? This is the Saul I know. I knew him last year. This is the guy that I thought was going to beat Hannah last year. This is the guy that did it this year instead. Did you guys see what he just did to Hannah in this tournament? And do you understand that Saul's about to beat Moose Haas and go to the finals of this tournament? How's, how's that trade working out for you now? Saul's a scary dude, right? I mean, you take everything match by match. All you can do is simply prepare for it. But Irish Gandalf, coming for you, pal. You want me to knock people out, I can knock them out. I can go and get my knuckles dirty. I can go 15 rounds if you want. There's not a type of fight in the Schmodown I can't come in and win. I'm not overlooking it. And, you know, hey, as a rookie, I, I've got a lot to learn. And so win, lose, or draw against this guy, I definitely think we'll have a good match. Send an apology to Kata's mom ever at either Instagram or Twitter. I'm all ears. I'm a very forgiving person. Tell me how much you love Saul and how, um, he really is as great as I believe him to be. That's what I want to hear. Believe in Saul.
Look, they're fired up, and they should be fired up. This is a, this is a rookie in Moose Haas, and this is Saul's second season. Both of these guys were not in, well, or, or Saul, rather, didn't get past the first round in the last year's tournament. And now here he is. He's got an opportunity to make it to the finals. He's talked about wanting to play Robert Parker. Moose Haas could be that rookie. Look, Dagnino, he has a very strong Star Wars competitor and goal leader. He's got a very strong competitor here in IG. He's got, he's, he's got strong teams. He's got strong singles. This exchange is looking solid right now in tournament season. What can Moose Haas do against Saul today? Going to find out. They are, and it's going to be a fun subplot to check out how Kate Mulligan and Tom Dagnino are going after each other because, you know, Kate Mulligan can roast with the best of them. Dagnino seems pretty impervious or maybe he just doesn't even hear, given his situation, the barbs that come from Kate Mulligan, but they're always entertaining to watch. The Den could really use some points right here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Three rounds in the Inner Geekdom Ultimate Schmodown Tournament. Introducing first, representing the Finstock Exchange with a record of two wins, one defeat, and two knockouts. This is Moose. Haas! Moose Haas, now I think the signature Finstock Exchange mug. Um, Moose, you have what a lot of rookies don't have. That's experience inside of both digital and in studio, in front, in front of an audience. What was that like, and what do you think it has added to your game being in that kind of high-pressure situation against Chance Ellison? Nerves plays a funny part in this game. And having the opportunity to not only film a match live, but in that cantina with a crowd, with players that I've only ever watched and never actually met in person, and then going against a legend like Chance Ellison, I mean, that got rid of the nerves real quick after winning that match. Um, and so, it, it, hey, welcome back to the Haas household. That's all I got to say. Moose, your angle looks like you're so tall you would have to climb a beanstalk to hang out with you. And you're playing giant as well right now. How do you keep that up against a competitor who is as locked in and as focused as Saul in? Contrast in styles here. You're more laid back. How's that going to help you today? I mean, listen, Skull, uh, Skull, Saul is a scary dude. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, look, personality-wise plays nothing into your prep, your study, and your mental agility in these matches. Um, yeah, hey, he can remain laser focused the entire time. Don't think I'm not just because I'm cracking a joke or two or just because I'm sipping off of a coffee mug that may or may not be filled with alcohol. Time <laughs> will tell, right? So it, it ultimately comes down to our prep and our study. And, you know, I, I think Saul will probably agree. Look, our first round matches, we both got TKOs, but that was not our best games. You know, they were sloppy games. There were a lot of misses. They were hard questions. By the way, hate you writers for these questions. Um, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to this. Side note, this is a disclosure. Uh, I am not giving written or verbal consent to be part of the Saul show. I do not want to be used as clickbait, Saul. Please understand. Fair enough. All right. Moose Haas from the Finstock Exchange in the semifinals. Good luck to you, sir. See you in a moment. And his opponent. Representing the Den with a record of three wins, two defeats, and three knockouts. This is Saul. It is Saul and Saul, as we mentioned, both you and Moose, knockout after knockout after knockout. I know you have a respect for the game. The question is, when it comes to Moose, did you watch his last match against Chance? And what did you think? I've seen every question of every match he's ever played. And I tell you what, it's uh, he comes off an ugly win. I come off an ugly win. And uh, I got, you know, I got respect for for having to play that way. These aren't going to be too clean anymore. We're, we're, in, we're, in, we're in a play, you know, we're now in the trenches. We're now, you're not going to see uh, high-octane offenses anymore you're going to see people who got the most heart and who can pull through these 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 ridiculous questions that we're at now we're in the ridiculous questions era now in the season 
and I look forward to getting my knuckles bloody. Well, you're about to have a bunch of ridiculous questions. Here's a softball for you. You know, Saul, you took a tough loss to Moses in a film match in front of an audience. Later that night at the Comedy Store, you made a heartfelt apology to me for your performance. I didn't need it, but now you have rebounded with an impressive victory over Hannah. Have you proven to yourself and your fans that you are back belonging amongst the greats in inner geekdom? Mark, I was apologizing because I stole your credit card. That's not, it wasn't, is that how you heard that? I don't know. I was, I was, I was, I was drunk. I don't know what I said that night. Look, the point is, is that uh, I'm as focused as I've ever been. I feel, I've never felt better before a match than I do right now. And I think if you're a fan of the Saul show, you're, you're going to get a very good episode today. All right. Well, look, you made it to the semifinals here against Musas. Good luck to you, sir. See you in a moment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. And man, was it great to see everybody back on the gridiron over the weekend. Lucky for us, that was just week one. There is no better place to get in on the action than DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy sports. And to add to this week's excitement, DraftKings has millions of dollars in prizes up for grabs. If you haven't tried DraftKings, head on over to the App Store now because you don't want to miss this. Draft your lineup now and feel the sweat like never before. Every run, pass, and catch means more with DraftKings. It's simple. You just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Nothing adds to the excitement of watching the game quite like having a shot of millions of dollars in prizes. DraftKings has paid out billions of dollars to winners since 2012, so they know a thing or two about cold hard cash. Download the DraftKings app now and use the code SEN Live. For a limited time, new users can get a free shot at millions of dollars in prizes this week. That's code SEN Live only at DraftKings. The minimum of $5 deposit is required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. All right, so our competitors are here, Mark. It's round number one in the semifinals. Winner plays Parker. What are the rules? Whew, that's a whole lot of pressure. The rules of round number one are as follows. Ten questions from ten different corners of inner geekdom know-how will emerge to the field. Questions worth one point apiece. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. At least there isn't in round number one. We'll ask the question. You have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule, named for famous former Schmoes No intern, JTI, upgraded to JTE. That's your repeat. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge. You may utilize it at any point throughout the three-round match. We'll bring in managers. We'll deliver it to our heart's content. It will be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. All right, Christian, those are the rules. The competitors have been set. And a note to managers, dancing must end after, but not before, midnight. That's right. All right, so we start with Saul. Are you ready? I am. And Moose, are you ready? Hit it. And let's get ready to schmodown. Round number one. Question number one. I'm going to start with Batman. You'll find the character of Mayor Borg in which Batman film? And uh, pleased to announce that I have just booked the gig of my life. I am the lead dog sitter for Christian's family when they go on vacation. Fact. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, and Saul. Batman. Yes. And... Moose, what did you have? Not Batman. Okay. So Batman or Batman 89, either one we would accept. So that is one nothing. Saul. Okay. And now we'll go to Swashbuckling Adventure and the question. What swashbuckling film features the line, Joaquin Alejandro, once I carved coffins for your parents, I'd hate to carve ones for you. And if... The Harloff family would like to practice going on vacation. I can be to your place as soon as I get back from Vegas. Well, don't worry. Don't you're going to be doing this a lot. Five, four. Give me the dog. 
two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we start with Moose. The Legend of Zoro? It's incorrect. Saul? The Mask of Zoro. Yes, sir. Saul going up. 2-0. Good start here for Saul as we get to question three. Graphic novels. Which actress plays Princess Urginia, E-R-G-E-N-I-A, who wants Hercules to train the armies of Thrace to defend the kingdom from bloodthirsty warlord, warlord Rhesus in the film Hercules? Please. Please use a JTE rule. Will you, Chandra? <laughs> and five, four, three, two. Please repeat the question. You rat. Yeah. <laughs> Which actress plays Princess Urginia, who wants Hercules to train the armies of Thrace to defend the kingdom from bloodthirsty warlord Rhesus in the film Hercules? Read well done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It's, I don't expect perfection. I expect improvement. That's what we got, Christian. Right. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. And pens down. Pens down. Pens down. And we start here with Saul. Rachel Nickel. Incorrect. And Moose. Rebecca Ferguson. Yes. Moose coming back here. Two, one. As Saul misses that one. And we get to question four. That's right. The match bearing out like Saul had the premonition of where the questions are difficult and nobody is going to have a perfect round one. That's the case here today. We move on to the world of Star Trek. And I will boldly ask this question. Which Star Trek film features the characters Manas, Tyvana, and Commander Finnegan? Manas, M A. N A S. Like bananas. You try and you're like, I don't need to spell it. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, repeat the question. All right. First one. And it's in the category of Star Trek. The question Which Star Trek film features the characters Manus, Tyvana, and Commander Finnegan? I have a, a new producer on the show, Mark. Uh, Is it the dog? No, oh, Jake Lieberman watched one match and said, I thought I could compete in this. I'm out. <laughs> Just Five, like us. <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down and hands up. And we start with Moose. Is it Star Trek First Contact? It is not. And Saul. Star Trek Beyond? Yes. So Saul oh, yeah. gets that one. And it's 3 1. All right, question. Number five, question number five, Planet of the Apes. Who plays Colonel Atar, A-T-T-A-R, in 2001's Planet of the Apes? I think we're spelling them now just to just to cover our own bases. 100%. He didn't pronounce it right. I, was like, I don't know yeah. this. We don't have that time. You know? Four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, and Saul. Michael Clark Duncan. Yes. Moose. Michael Clark Duncan. All right. So it is now 4-2. Saul keeping his two-point lead as we get to question six. And that is in the category of Jurassic Park. That's P-A-R-K. The question, which Jurassic Park film features the line, are those meat-eating metasauruses? And be honest, was that originally slated for me to read, but you had the writers rearrange it because you wanted to read it so much? <laughs> I didn't want you to mispronounce the last word. Oh, that's not nice. Five, four. Could have gone bad. Three, two, one. Hands down. Hands up, please. And Moose. Jurassic Park. Yes, Saul. Jurassic Park. All right, so now we see the score at 5-3. 5-3. As we get into the seventh category, and that is the category of who said it, quotes. Which 2000s comic book movie has the line? She will always be mine and I will always be hers. She owns me, body and soul. She is the love of my life. She is my city. Eh, I give it two weeks. 
Oh, okay. I was going to say, I thought you were and my read, my line read. I thought my line read. No, was your line was great. I just don't buy this relationship lasting. I, I think you're right. It's like everyone I see at Disneyland. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Hands up. Please, Saul. The spirit. Yes. Moose. Yep. All right. So Saul starting to take a nice little lead for himself here. He's up by three. Six, three. Six, three. Going into question eight. And that is in the category of Marvel films. And the question for a point. In Iron Man 3, how many total bombings have been attributed to the Mandarin with the public only knowing about three? Can you do your Mandarin impression? Uh, You'll yeah. never see. Five. Five. Four. See? I have to cut you off. Three. Two. One. Hands down. Hands up, please. And we start with Moose. Seven. It is not. Saul? Seven. <clears throat> Looking for nine. Just as many absences as Ferris Bueller had. The answer was nine. All right, here we go. Next question. Question nine. DC, in Green Lantern, what is Carol Ferris's call sign as a fighter jet pilot? See how that works? I, I mentioned Ferris Bueller. Now we have a question. Ferris. Smart. Yeah. Continuity. All, all lines up. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Hands down. Hands up, please. And we start with Saul. Sapphire. Yes. Moose. Not Sapphire. Wow. All right. So Moose Haas now finds himself down by four. Saul with seven big points to Moose's three at the moment as we get two. Question number 10. The final question around number one. Four point lead for Saul. Final category is the galaxy far, far away. Star Wars. And the question. Which Star Wars film features the following characters? Anakin Skywalker, Mace Windu, General Loathsome, and Kronos 327. Uh, yeah, if that's my last name, probably going to change it. What, 327? Loathsome. Oh. Five. Four. Three. Are you loathsome? One. Pens down. Oh. And we start with... Moose Haas. Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Yes, Saul. Star Wars, The Clone Wars. A big round for Saul. It was the Saul show in round number one, eight, four. Only misses two and sees him up, sees himself up by four going into round number two. What's the rules? He's loving that four-point lead tenderly. Your next round is round two. The wheel round. The wheel of fate, doom, and justice. We're all over the world, so... It's going to be a virtual wheel each competitor spins. Once they settle on a particular realm of know-how, five questions emerge, each one worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We give you four options, one of which we're told is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. It's useful because stealing is available in round number two. It is going to be Saul who has the decision to make. Saul, it's your show, at least for the next couple seconds here. Would you like to spin that wheel first? Or your opponent who did not want to appear on your show? Um, I would like to spin the wheel first, please, Mark. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Nate, you have 60 seconds starting now. Thank you. Oh, look, you could get a free pizza, apparently. <laughs> Don't need that. Hey, Saul, you know what I love about you? Uh, my baby blue eyes. That and um, we don't even have to talk about how great you were in that first round. That right now, all you're thinking about is the two that you missed. That is what makes you the best player here. But I also need you to stop thinking about those two and just listen very carefully to the questions that come up because you, my man, are looking sharp. You are looking exact. You are looking right where you need to be. So uh, as much as I, as much as I know that you're a great player because you are going to fixate on those two that you missed. That's not, it, it doesn't serve us at this point. So just stay where you, you are in the pocket, my friend. You know what else I love about you? That Gucci courted you and you chose me. Thanks, buddy. No problem. <laughs> and here's the spin. It was a big delay for me, so dope. 
Does someone tell me what it lands on? Spinners, uh, shorts. Sure. I know. You want to? Should we go again, Saul? Do you... <laughs> no, we'll we'll be taking Superman. Thank you. <laughs> Superman. Yes, please. Yes, please. So we have Saul choosing for Spinner's choice. Superman. Saul, are you ready? I am ready. Yes. Five questions. Here's number one. In Man of Steel, what is the name of Superman's mother on Krypton? Lara. That's correct. For two points. Sidney J. Fury directed Christopher Reeve in which Superman film? Superman for the quest for peace. Correct for two points. Okay. In Batman v Superman, what does Luther try to convince Senator Finch to allow him to import into Metropolis? Kryptonite. More points. Ask question four coming up here. In Superman the movie, the film begins with a black and white prologue in June of what year? 1938. That's correct. Oh. Points. That's that's a big one. All right, and here is your last question. In Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, David Warfield is able to buy the Daily Planet because it has not made money in how many years? Multiple choice, please. Is it A, 2, B, 3, C, 4, D, 5? Five. It's incorrect. Moose for the one point steal. In Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, David Warfield is able to buy the Daily Planet because it has not made money in how many years? Is it A, 2, B, 3, C, 4, D, 5? I'm going to go with four. Looking for three. Three mm. after there. So no steal, but Saul finds himself now 16 4. 16 4 over Moose Haas, as now it is time for Moose Haas to get a big spin. He needs it at the moment, so we're going to drop out Saul and bring in Dagnino. All right. Well, you know, the work's cut out for us right now. I mean, our ass is in the jackpot per uh, Terry Collins. Um, look, you know, don't forget, you know, we still give off a musk that brings the coyotes down from the hill. Always remember that. Look, 16-4, it's not insurmountable. It's doable, but we need these. Let's spin the wheel, and let's go. All right, here is the wheel. Here's the spin. Christian, did he mean that Adam Collins is now smelling the musk of Dagnino and Moose? It's certainly possible. Who knows what this uh, is? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, God. Okay. Well, Opponent's choice. I mean, so now wrong, it is going, going to be wrong. back up to the den. 60 seconds to decide. I, I take no pleasure in this. I take no pleasure in this. That we've been on this side for so long, but uh, what are you what are you thinking? Yes, you said wanna, you've seen yeah. I want to give I want to make it as wide as possible. Yep. Uh fantasy sci-fi is the biggest scores and soundtracks is every movie in the division. Uh let's give them scores and soundtracks. Great. All right, so Saul has chosen scores and soundtracks for Moose Haas. All right, Moose, you're going to get five questions, Mark. All right, Moose, two points apiece unless you need the aid of multiple choice. And your question number one in the category of opponent's choice, which is now turned into scores and soundtracks, is the songs Burn, Golgotha Tenement Blues, and Color Me Once are on the soundtrack for what 1990s comic book film? See hands from Saul. Hands from Saul, please. Let me go multiple choice. All right. Your four options for a point. Is it A, The Crow, B, The Phantom, C, Mystery Men, or D, Spawn? I'm going to go with Spawn. Spawn is incorrect. So, Saul, I'm going to give you an opportunity to steal. I'm going to repeat the question and the multiple choice options. The songs Burn, Golgotha Tenement Blues, and Color Me Once are on the soundtrack for what 1990s comic book film? Is it A, The Crow, B, The Phantom, C, Mystery Men, or D, Spawn? The Crow. 
Stone Temple Pilots also making an appearance on that soundtrack. That is creative and correct for a point. And so Saul with a big steal there, Christian. 17 to 4. Haas needs to get some points here. Moose, your next question for two points is who composed the score for both Fantastic Four and Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer? Five, four, three. John Ottman. Is correct for two much needed points. He cuts the lead to 11. He's got three questions remaining in the category of scores and soundtracks. Your next question for two more points. Zordon Awakes, Birth of a Legend, and Megazord are featured tracks in the score to what fantasy sci-fi film? Five, four, three, two. Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. That is incorrect. Saul, you have another steal opportunity for two points this time. I'm going to repeat the question. Zordon Awakes, Birth of a Legend, and Megazord are featured tracks in the score to what fantasy sci-fi film? Power Rangers. That is correct for two more points, and here is where we stand at the moment. It's a 13-point lead for Saul. Moose has two questions left, meaning he's got a possibility of four points remaining in round number two. He's going to have to accrue at least three of those points in order to get the match into round number three. We're in knockout territory, but Moose, you still control your own destiny as far as getting to the next round goes. Your penultimate question in the category of scores and soundtracks for two points. Who recorded the song Ashes for the film Deadpool 2? Uh, let's go multiple choice. All right. And again, this is a point you need to have to continue the match. Your options, is it A, Adele, B, Lady Gaga, C, Ariana Grande, or D, Celine Dion? Celine Dion. It's a point he had to have, and he got it there, Christian. So it's 19 to 7, Moose. He's got to hit his final question in round number two. Off the bat, he needs both points to avoid the knockout. All right, so here it is. Here is the final question. If he gets it, then we move on to round number three. If not, then Saul will get another TKO and move into the finals against Robert Parker. And your question, Moose, for two points to advance to round three. Who composed the score for Hellboy 2, The Golden Army? Five, four. Repeat the question. Second one. All right, you have one JT remaining. The question, who composed the score for Hellboy 2, The Golden Army? Is it Danny Elfman? The Oingo Boingo headman is correct for two wow. points. And Christian, he avoided the knockout. He's still got a long way to go to avoid the TKO, but Moose got it to round number three. That says a lot about Moose Haas, that he was able to fight out of that on the brink of extinction, if you will. But he gets himself out of there, and he gets himself to the third round. So now we get to the third round. Mark, what are the rules of the third round? The round that will determine the match. Let's we go to sudden death overtime in round number three. We need some help from each competitor. This help comes in the form of a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each of you. These numbers may range from 1 to 16. You may not pick the same numerals as your opponent. Each integer corresponds to a unique category of Schmodown Inner Geekdom Mystery. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one, three points. Your final question is worth five big points. And so it is Saul who enjoys a commanding lead going into round three, who has the luxury of giving us his three lucky numbers first. Saul, from one to 16, what three numerals feel fortunate? One, two, and three. 
One for him, Saul, and for Moose. Four, five, six. Four, five, and six. All right, Kate, 60 seconds. There's nothing to, uh, there's nothing to say. You, you you look fantastic. You're just, you are just, uh, you said you wanted to get your knuckles bloody. They're bloodied. And I know, listen, I know that the wheel favored us, and we can't underestimate that, and the wheel did not favor him, and we can't underestimate that. But you showed up and showed out even in his slice. So uh, you are, you're magnificent, and everybody can twirl on this as far as I'm concerned. Can I say that? Sure, why not? All right. Well, good luck to Saul. Unless you have any other comments, we're gonna. Yeah. Anything else to say? No. Nope. See you in the winter circle. All right, Tom. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, the ball did bounce his way uh, on every single question. Everything. Ah, it's the nature of the the game. Here. Uh, let's just, you know, like I said, let's let's get to three and five, and then anything can happen. You know, it's just yep. basically it. I think you got one more JTE rule. Uh, yeah, we're 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 in deep here, but let's uh let's let's push them to the edge. Let's make them answer some questions. You know what I mean? Yeah, sounds good. Look, let's do it. All right, so Moose Haas is going to go first. He needs to hit all three questions here, and he has chosen category four. That is Alien and Predator. Alien and Predator. Alien and Predator, two great franchises. And your question: to stay alive in the match for two points to cut the lead to eight. Moose, what year was the film Alien released? 1979. Same year as Van Halen, too. That is correct for two points, and now it's an eight-point game. Haas still alive and now facing his three-pointer. All right, so here is the three-pointer from Moose Haas. Moose chose category five, and that would give him Transformers, Mark. More than meets the eye. And your question for three points, and once again, to remain in the match. Which Oscar nominee plays billionaire Joshua Joyce in Transformers Age of Extinction? That's Stanley Tucci. The great Stanley Tucci is correct, and he's doing what Dagnino, his manager, asked him to do so far, Christian. He's cut the lead to five. Now he has a question for five points that could tie him with Saul and avoid the TKO, forcing Saul to answer a question. Haas keeps fighting. Haas keeps fighting back, and now he gets category six, and that gives him comic book movies. Comic book movies. These all comic book movies. I, I'm told to just read the question. All right. Your question for five points to tie the lead. What comic book film begins with the line, I don't know, feels like our grave? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. That's the last one. Final one. Categories, comic book movies. The question, what comic book film begins with the line, I don't know, feels like our grave? Five, four, three. The old guard. And your winner! My way of technical knockout is, is Saul! The answer was Priest. Priest was the answer. Saul has now become the only inner geekdom competitor in the history of the game to get four knockouts <laughs> in one season and in general. That is a record that Saul has just broken. Even the current champion, Mike Kalinowski, only with three knockouts in the division. So with that, Saul TKOing Moose Haas. And now we, he will go on to play Robert Parker in the finals. And he will also go on to talk to Jen Sturger in the winner's circle. Congratulations, Saul. Congratulations to Kate. Wow. I mean, look, the first thing I will say, even though the story obviously is Saul, four and two, four knockouts very impressive moose haas has to be commended on what he just did i know he's frustrated i know it's bummed out he's not wrong 
I mean, and Dagnino's not wrong. The game goes the way the game goes. Spinners, opponents, joints happens all the time. It benefited Saul today. Tomorrow it'll benefit Moose. But today, Moose Haas stuck. He was in there. He was on the verge of being knocked out, came back, and then fought all the way through at a tough five-pointer. But he fought very, very well in, the, in that match there. This entire division, and indeed the league, is full of great competitors, but what a backbone it takes to continue yeah. to fight uphill like that, to keep storming even when you're running on a massive incline towards your opponent who has a sizable lead. Even after round number one, then you see the spinners and opponent's choice. It was already a tough game for Haas, and then he has those two spins, neither one going his way, but he did rebound in round three. Commendably so, just couldn't quite avoid the TKO. And so Saul does achieve a record knockout that is going to go down in Schmodown history. And for more Schmodown history, I'm sure he probably has some witty things to say, as does his manager, Kate Mulligan of the Den, who are now joined by our own, the great Jen Sturger. Kate, you seem to be, oh, thank goodness. Let's all center ourselves. Yeah. Uh, Kate, you seem much more, uh, much in a much better mood than sometimes I've spoken to you. Yes. Um, what has this guy meant to the Den this season, just in his performance alone? I mean, he's he's one of the top uh, point earners for the whole league, <laughs> let alone for the Den. Uh, this is this is to me, I think, the uh, most important thing that could have happened with Saul is collision, because I think that was the moment that Saul decided to stop being good and start being great, and it was because he had it, he stumbled, and to me, I knew. I knew that that happened. I, I knew uh, it was going to be, he was going to be coming back and it was going to be uh, better than ever and there was going to be no stopping him. And I can't tell you, I mean, this guy works so hard, Jen. Um, so what has he meant to the den? He's, he's been, uh, he's, uh, you know, been a, a top point scorer, but also just like, I just think it's just a, the epitome of work ethic and just uh, couldn't be prouder for this, of this guy. Work ethic and perseverance. I got to say, Saul, you know, you had that heartbreaking loss against Amaru Moses, obviously a collision, but now you're 2-0 since then with two more KOs. So was that was that loss of collision kind of that gut check moment that you needed, you know, just to be like, oh, I'm really in this and I'm I'm one of the best. And now I have to go out there and I just have to prove it. It was it was it was an awakening. And, you know, you don't you don't learn a whole lot by winning. And then when you lose, you can all of a sudden you, your mind opens up and you can pull all sorts of wisdom that you that was getting blocked or, you know, you're not going to push yourself as hard or. And I needed that loss. I needed that loss very much. And that was probably the pivotal. That's probably when I look back on this season, that'll be the moment. That'll be the moment that I came back on. I, I came online for real. That, that's when I, I spoke to around. you. I spoke to you afterwards. And I, I have to say you were absolutely heartbroken you know what i mean in terms of just i i think it was just you were not expecting that to be the outcome at all and so i can only imagine that that just kind of shook you out of any kind of complacency you may have had or just like oh am i this good a lot of people might not have come back from that but i mean we, we spoke that day and i told you like i've seen plenty of players go the same route where they just have that one heartbreaking loss and then just go on to just absolutely wreck things and and prove their greatness i i've been very lucky that people uh people have put a lot of faith in me and you know what hurt the most at collision was that i couldn't reward that faith and after that i i promised to kate privately and i think i put it publicly i said i this will be rectified this will be accounted for this will not be <laughs> forgotten and today is just another example of me accounting for what i did and i will repay back the faith people have had in me and i will even i'll give you more reason to believe I love that because let's face it, you have a pretty uh, stiff challenge ahead of you in Parker. Not only are you going to be facing one of the best inner geekdom players going right now, but you're going to be participating in a five round match. Uh, does that at all kind of give you pause or any kind of hesitation? And how are you guys going to prep for that going forward? That gives me no pause, gives me no hesitation. I, when I when I think about when I when I make a mental map of my, my career, what I want to do in the Schmodown, it's going to be a lot of five round matches. And this just happens to be the first one. Uh, the preparation, of course, we're going to work. We're going to do speed work, and we're going to be a little more expansive than we have been. Um, but aside from that, I've been waiting for this. You know, I know what I signed up for, and I, I I can't wait. Kate, you know, you've got Saul going now for the finals, and you've got Harper going for the Star Wars title. I feel, and just like a week. How are you feeling about both your guys right now? And is this like that that tide you need to turn for the den to at least put yourself in? 
to a place where you're having a very respectable season. I don't think the tide turns for the den, but I do think that these two people, uh, I just think statistics, like, I just think number wise, uh, these both of my men can and will go win belts. And I don't. But I don't let's face it. it. You can play spoilers to a lot of people. Yes, 100%. And let's face and it, sometimes that's the joy in it at that taking, point. You know what I mean? Taking the points, yep, taking the points is, is more going to be our focus at this point. As someone who's worked for the Jets and, and, and been a fan of Florida football, let me tell you, sometimes all you can root for is just to ruin things for others. Just to ruin things for others. Yeah, that's, that's what we're going <laughs> for at this point. We've, you know, we've had we've had an underwhelming season, uh, season in terms of uh, singles and teams. We've got some great entries in the tournaments, but it's been IG and Star Wars. You've seen, you saw what Harper cut through that Star Wars tournament, and he's going to take that belt. And and you've got Saul here who just cut through the tournament, and he's going to take that belt. So to me, I, this is right now. This is this is the obviously these two are the heartbeat of of the in terms of what the, what the good when the den wins. It's it's the face of these two. Um, but you know, it's 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 definitely been a, a disappointing season. You know, things. It's not just that things didn't go our way. We just, for whatever reason, we just couldn't pull it to pull it off. But thank God for Saul and thank God for Thomas Harper because they have really kept us legitimate in this. And I think, uh, I, I also think, I, I think about Saul last year. Didn't you know? Didn't even get past the first round in the tournament, and here he is in the finals. It just it, this guy's great? story is. And I and I'm telling you, we just, I just always knew it, he was capable of it and i'm just so glad that he's I'm, I'm so glad people are finally getting on board and realizing yeah this guy's the real deal absolutely i saw you know when hannah beat you you swore revenge and then when moses won you you said the same you said you were coming back for more that this wasn't over do you want moses to beat mike so that you can get him at spectacular you know this time hopefully for a belt the way i see it me and him not too dissimilar than Brandon Hanna. We're gonna, th there will be a Saul Moses two. There'll be a Saul Moses three. When I get to him, if I get to him in December, I get to him in December. If I get to him in April of 2022, I get to him in April of 2022. He knows that he hasn't seen the last of this head <laughs> and it's gonna happen. It doesn't matter. I'm not focused on the spectacular right now. I'm focused on Robert Parker and the finals. That's what I'm going to be thinking about right now. All of that's a luxury that I'll I'll figure I'll figure out later. And I want to apologize everyone for being so boring lately. I just had a re I just had to reassess how I'm putting together this machine. And so far, so good. Stick with me. Thanks. This match wasn't boring, honey. This match wasn't boring. Mm -hmm. Kate seems like she's already started celebrating. So, <laughs> anyways, mm -hmm. I. Congratulations on a well-fought victory today and a really impressive showing. And uh, mm. best of luck to you. Like I said, Thank you got you your work so cut out for you. Jen, and as a fan of the Giants, the fun for us is winning championships, and that's what I plan on doing. But thank you very much for the kind <laughs> words. I appreciate it. Ooh, you had to go there. Saul is happy as he should be. He looked really good. And like, like you said, four wins, all by knockout, all this season, that's – that's something a lot of Intergeekdom players have not done, and the most knockouts by any Intergeekdom player ever. I mean, that's that's an accomplishment and something that uh, he should, certainly should be proud of. But Saul and the Den moving on, and now it's we got Saul versus Parker. That's a hell of a finals. It's a hell of a finals, and I'd say Saul's championship hopes are much clearer than the New York Football Giants at the moment. But. Let's talk about Moose Haas just a little bit more because he did have a hell of an effort against a locked-in, focused, rebounding Saul. He may not feel like he's rebounding. His fans may not feel like he's rebounding, but you still know that there's that fire in there that he's never going to feel like he did his fans justice until he gets that championship. Well, I would say Moose did his fans justice by how hard he fought today, losing on a tough five-pointer, not being able to avoid the TKO. I like the movie, Priest. You weren't quite as big of a fan of it. No, you know, it's funny. Until you said that, I forgot all about it. But then I realized, oh, yeah, the Bettany movie. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. All right. Well, either way, we are now going to be talking to Moose Haas and Tom Dagnino, who are standing by with Jen. Hello. Gentlemen, tough loss today, obviously. Uh, Moose, I have to say this. For as devastating as the scoreboard looked for you at times, I don't think you can, like be mad at yourself at all considering the way you played given all of this the circumstances you were handed i would call it something else but we can't say those words on you know on the internet so 
Oh, I definitely want to say a few words right now, but uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I had to sign a contract not to say these things. So, look, hats off to Saul. Congratulations, man. Uh, you played a hell of a game, and you know, uh, of all of the matches this season, honestly, this was the one I was looking forward to the most. Uh, you know, caps off a sh week. Oh. <laughs> Dang it! It's not a bad word. Yeah. Anyways. So, anyways, it just caps off a long, bad week for me. Um, and look, at this point in time, I, uh, you know, Parker's a beast. And Saul showed his, you know, his abilities today, and that's for sure. And you know what? He, uh, despite the fact that he's a Giants fan, come on, man. Uh, but seriously, uh, he did well today. I think that's going to be a heck of a match between Parker and, and Saul. And, uh, yeah, hey, look, everything today went his way and every single answer I gave I questioned myself every single time before spouting out the answer I knew the answer to the crow I knew the answer to the crow without having to go to multiple choice but I second guessed myself and I went to multiple choice and that's it just tough. has and you, sometimes it just when you get so far behind you you start you start going man yeah. I need every one of these points and you start second guessing your knowledge I, I totally understand that, that makes sense. for sure oh. it's definitely a, a heartbreaker um, I really wanted to play Parker, um, but hey, you know what? I'll sit back on the sidelines and root for the rest of the Finstock Exchange. We'll definitely prep the rest of the guys that are still in, you know, our tournaments and make sure that they go a long way. And you know, <sighs> tough loss. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like I said, yesterday's price ain't today's price, you know. And that's just really what sure. I want to, you know. So congratulations to the British hobo professor and his manic manager. Good for them. Yeah, seriously. You know, normally it's you guys delivering the TKO today. I I'm yeah. sure, like, this is kind of a... Yeah, the Den was... kind of a heartbreaker, the only, heartbreaker yeah, the for Den you. Den was the only team that we have at minus the one. And I really, me and Moose and the whole faction, uh, thought that was going to happen today. But, the, like I said, I've been in these matches before where just everything goes wrong. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, I think yep. we felt good. I think we prepped, prepped good. Uh, the questions uh, are getting a lot harder. Um, and a lot more, you know, uh, intriguing and deep and the cuts are there and kudos to the writing team for doing that because it's not that easy anymore. And uh, no. it's still there today. So, you know, like I said, um, we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. But Moose had a great season. Uh, you know, he beat Chance, which uh, validates him as a, a legit threat in this league. And Absolutely. there's no question about that. You know, uh, he took Amaru right there. And like I said, it's it's a really tough mountain to climb you you know you exhaust all your energy trying to climb up that hill and by the time you almost get there then somebody just puts on the afterburners and that's kind of what happened here. yeah moose you know you're two and two right now you're basically at, you're at 500 which the mets would consider that a winning season um <laughs> and, and you had a great start in ig for a rookie but what do you hope to accomplish in season nine and will you be returning um look if they'll have me sure absolutely you know, uh, I mean, coming into this, I wanted to obviously play in a lot more divisions, but there's only so many matches to go around for everybody. You know, uh, not wanting to be a selfish player. I didn't try to keep pushing for more matches. And I stayed in IG. And so, you know, it'd be interesting next year to mix it up a little bit and get in, uh, you know, the actual movie leagues and the singles and maybe get a teammate and take it from there. But yeah, hey, listen, if Gucci wants me back on the Finstock Exchange, you better believe I'm coming back on the Finstock Exchange. So. Look, Gucci, no, I'm not putting you on the spot. The I'm not putting well, you on the spot, well, Gucci. Well, there. Thank you, dude. Sorry about that. It's fine. We're just doing interviews. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, so, Gucci, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but, I mean, there's going to be a lot of changes next season, obviously. So, sure. will we see Moose on the exchange next season? I mean, yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, he's a, he's our guy. I, I believe in him. I believe he's a championship player. I mean, yeah, sure, things will, um, you know, change i mean obviously uh, you know who knows what uh you know the powers that be have up their sleeves you know uh no one could say nothing i don't even know who if they're gonna i'll be here who knows I, I, nobody knows anything that's what i know you know it's a tough situation it's a frustrating situation there were but like really five really there were like five gucciisms right there that i just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're always good for a good quote <laughs> oh, See, that's, man. that's why you don't want to leave the exchange because those little pearls of wisdoms those gucciisms 
I'm keeping them down and I'm gonna create a coffee table book, right? Of Gucci isms. Yeah, there it is. New York Times bestseller. That'll be the best of brilliance. Thing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Flashes of brilliance. It's always the case, you know. Like I said, Shakespeare's been real quiet ever since I've been talking. So. <laughs> Do you want to tell him or should I? Anyways. <laughs> But, uh, a tough, tough loss today, guys. Yeah. Uh, and I, I understand that this is the end of your season, Moose, but it's been an absolute pleasure watching you play. And I uh, hope to see you again next year. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Honestly, like, I'm an average schmo. You know, I came into this league with no intention of doing anything other than playing movie trivia. I didn't think I'd get a win. You know, and I didn't think I'd be drafted by the exchange. Like, there's a lot of things that happened this season for me that are amazing. I got to play a live match at a Star Wars cantina. Like, how freaking Pretty cool nice. is that? Yeah, I got to TKO a legend at the le So it, it's ending on a crap note, but there were some good highs in there. And Absolutely. certainly being part of the exchange, I think was probably the best time. We had the best that. faction. We're gonna win faction of the year. We're gonna win the faction title. We're gonna win comeback player of the year. We're gonna win rookie of the year. I'm gonna win uh, the unprecedented fourth manager of the year. There's so many things we're going to win. I have managers calling me every single day, all hours of the night. Sam Levine, three o'clock in the morning. Uh, Roxy, all hours of the night. They're, they're they're just wondering how I did this. They're like, we just, you know, we don't want to congratulate you anymore. I'm like, well, I don't know what you want me to do. You know, that's it. Oh, Gucci. I just want to know what it's like to live in your world sometimes. But then I am scared to, I'm absolutely terrified to ask. Anyways, tough loss today, gentlemen. Um, but best of luck to you next season, uh, Moose. And like I said, it's been an honor watching you play. Look, classy uh, response there from Moose Haas. And obviously, anytime you, 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 you're you fighting to get to that that moment, right? A chance to get to the spectacular. And and it's over and the season's over. It's, it's a bummer. But I thought he carried himself well. And yeah, he'll be back next season for sure. And whether or not he's with the exchange, only time will tell. But Saul does what he set out to do he is four and two four knockouts and now Saul versus Parker that is the finals and we're gonna find out who is going to the spectacular yeah it was nice to see the dichotomy of interviews we just witnessed because Moose not resting on his laurels but enjoying the spoils of war that he did reap this season and he's gonna reflect on that for a little bit Saul no time to ponder he is prepping for another match and it's gonna be a big one against the spider Robert Parker. So a whole lot of movie trivia schmodown action that we just witnessed. And there's a whole lot more coming up. Christian, we have live events. We have tournaments. Where do you want to begin? Bud? As Jen mentioned, on September 10th, Dim Alonza versus Harper for the Star Wars Championship. Make sure you go and get those pay-per-view tickets now. And speaking of big title matches, it's not airing on September 12th, but you can come watch it at September 12th at the Cantina. And it is the Movie Trivia Schmodown Singles Championship of the World. Big time Ethan Irwin looking to get his first title defense. And he's going to do it against Lady Justice Marisol McKee, who is the first woman to play for the championship since Clark Wolf in 2018. Can she make history by becoming the first woman to win the championship, becoming the first African-American to win the championship? It all goes down on September 12th at the Cantina, the SchmodownLive.com. That would be the Scum and Villainy Cantina, and that's right in Hollywood Boulevard. And if Jen Sturger wanted the answer to the question, what's it like to be in Finstock's world? Some villainy, good places to start, and the fridge has nothing but an old jar of pickles in it. So I think you're good staying right where you are, and we want you to stay right where you are. That is watching the movie Trivia Schmodown. Subscribe to the stuff, rate, review the podcast, the entire empire. It's a benevolent empire that we've built here. We appreciate your fandom, your support. Check out the Patreon as well as the Schmodown Live. Dot com. That's Christian. I'm Mark, and we'll see you next time at the Movie Trivia Schmoda.